Welcome back. The pain of a grieving orca mother was felt all across the world in the past few weeks as images showed her pushing the body of her dead calf for more than two weeks. Now, unprecedented steps are being taken to help further research and protect these beautiful creatures. So joining me here today to tell us more about the new task force to keep the orcas healthy is the co-chair, Les Purse. It's good to meet you. Oh, it's very nice to meet you too. Very Thanks nice. Thanks for being here. Um, tell me about the task force. Why was it formed? Well, Governor Inslee founded the task force in the early spring, uh, being concerned about the plight of the orcas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was um, uh, pleased to serve along with my co-chair, Stephanie Celine. And the goals of the task force were wide-reaching. Um, he wanted us to bring together all of the interest groups that that are concerned about the orcas and that that are that benefit or are associated with the Salish Sea and the Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. So it's a large task force of over 40 people that represent businesses, agriculture, east and west side of the state, educators, and most importantly, researchers and scientists that are members of this group. And we have three things that we're trying to to make recommendations about that we know that affect the orcas. First is food. It's apparent from the dramatic pictures that you can see how the orcas are beginning to suffer from inadequate food. The southern residents primarily get their food from Chinook salmon. Unlike other orcas, that is their primary food source. Mm -hmm. And we know about the decline in regard to the Chinook salmon themselves. The other is noise. The increased population in our sound um, the increased vessel traffic um, makes it difficult for the orca whales to echolocate for their food, uh, to navigate. Um, and so we need to make recommendations in regard to how we address that particular issue. And probably the biggest challenge I think that we face in addition has to do with the conditions, the toxic conditions of the Puget Sound of the Salish Sea itself. And that's us. That's us. Um, and it's how we live every day. Um, it will require dramatic recommendations in regard to how we begin to change our lifestyle uh, and to recognize the, the very negative impact to the Puget Sound itself that just us living day to day, right. our cars, um, uh, the, the agricultural work that we've done, all that contributes to this problem. All of those things that end up in the water. In the water. That we may not even think about. We, we think we're doing we can, a lot of environmentally sound practices, but we've got all we've of this made, stuff still happening. We've made tremendous kinds of attempts over the last few years. That's one thing I've learned from talking with scientists in order to take steps to, to clean, keep the, clean, the sound clean and to work in that direction. But we have to do much, much more. The issue of habitat is also a, a, a major issue and one that all of that we have direct responsibility for as citizens. How we treat the the barriers along the sound in our own residence, uh, in commercial areas, and how we begin to try to revitalize the habitat for salmon and forage fish. We have to do it. Um, the the mother with the calf. Uh, the calf had died. The mother pushed that baby around for what, 17 days, something That's like that? That's what I understand. And I don't know anybody whose heart wasn't broken by that. Is that something we see orcas do? Well, it's my understanding that that is not the first time that that has occurred. And for me, after learning more about the orcas, their intelligence, uh, their family unit, not unlike us and our family yeah. units, and, uh, and they're highly, highly intelligent um, animals, um, I, I I could relate, and I think the world is related to the grieving process of this loss. But I like to think in, in all of the discussion about this that it's a message that they're telling us about where they live and the, the issues that are facing where they live in the Salish Sea. And I think a cry for us to do something about this. And I think attention. not just a message in regard to them, but I think it's a direct connection to what we face as human beings. Now that's pretty profound, and I believe you are correct. There is a, a young orca who's sick, 
and who's been getting antibiotics, yes, is that correct? Yes, that's what I understand. Um, and so I'm, I'm interested in why we're making that intervention. Is it possible that we're intervening too much? What What's the story there? Well, I, I think that you raise an interesting question, and there's a lot of discussion about that among scientists. Um, clearly, if we can make a difference to, to um, help this young orca recover, become healthy, and survive in their pod, I, it, it, it could be a, it can be a wonderful thing, um, and I think the scientists are concerned that they're careful not to have the orcas habituate to to feeding. And they're very intelligent people. And how do you intervene and provide uh, what we know in science that may be healthy for the orca to recover and gain their own strength and to be independent in the environment is the goal. So it's new. Uh, they're learning as they go, and I think that's good. I think that it's a very positive thing that if we can show our caring for them, they understand they're very, very smart. That's amazing. Yeah. So when do you think these recommendations will be made public and, and the general population, we're all so concerned about the orcas, can find out more about what's going to be necessary? Well, we, um, we'll have a, one of our last task force meetings on the 28th of August, and... Uh, with some of the outlines of the supplemental um, initial recommendations. And uh, we hope to have a final report to the governor by the 1st of November uh, in time for the legislative session, in time to frame uh, uh, a sense of what we see that are critical and that we've learned. Mm -hmm. But this task force will go on for another year, so there will be short-term and long-term recommendations because so much of what we're doing is so complicated and challenging and we have to make sure that the public is aware about what they can do to make a difference right. and to understand how the cha what the political challenges are and what we have the risks we have to take we hope to take some bold steps recommendations yeah. and we hope that those steps the public can resonate with and can support us in those efforts well, I look forward to hearing what those are. I hope you'll come back and visit with us. I would those, be delighted to. At those junctures, yes. and we'll find out more. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, my heart has been hurting for them. Up next, another round of New Day Hot Topics with the Seattle Gents. We'll be back after this break. Very nice to talk to you. Well, thank to you. you. Very nice Please to talk to you.